Now, this problem, while it might be more complicated, it might be more simple. The A and B genes are on the same chromosome, so that means we only need to consider one chromosome. But there's two genes on the chromosome, so maybe that makes it more complicated. We're told we don't need to worry about crossovers, that they're very rare. So let's just do it and see what we get. Here's our two chromosomes. I've drawn A1 and B2 close together to remind us that we don't need to worry about crossovers. And as usual, it's always the same. The DNA replicates, the homologs find each other, they move to the center of the cell, and they're pulled apart. And then the two products of meiosis one, again, the chromosomes, the sister chromatids are attached by spindle fibers and they're pulled apart. Two cells are B1A1, two cells are B2A1. And again, we didn't need to worry about the A alleles at all because the man was homozygous for A. We could have just written B1 on our, and B2 on our chromosomes and completely ignored the A alleles. In the next problem, things finally get a little more interesting. We were still considering two genes, but this time the man is heterozygous for both genes, gene A and gene G. They're on different chromosomes, so what gametes is a single meiosis going to produce?